Howdy once again, it's Tubal Kane, and again I'm talking about the South Bend 9 inch lathe and in this video I'm going to talk about all the different kinds of oils that you need to lubricate your lathe properly and then in the following video I'm going to do the actual lubricating and, and show you where you should put that oil and this video will have a great deal of uh, detail about these different kinds of oils and where to find them as well as how to use them in a discussion on viscosity. But also on uh, this page I will put a list of the titles of all the videos that are in this series about the South Bend and there are about eight or nine of them in all. And thanks for listening and thanks for supporting my channel. This is the gear guard for the lathe and I took it off so that we can look at the label the tag here about lubrication and it is not easy to read you almost need to stand on your head and uh, the lighting isn't good I'm going to attempt to take a few stills of this but uh, it's uh, probably going to be more interesting for you to see what I have on my lubrication chart the paper one but a lot of the lathes are equipped with this if you can figure it out now when I bought another 9 inch lathe, not the one in discussion today, this manual came with it, this parts manual, but inside of it there were many uh, different pages, but one of them was and is a lubrication chart from 1965, so let's take a look at that. But again, here's a still of this if you can make it out, and I'm not going to read uh, blow up the lower part here on anti-friction bearings because anti-friction bearings of course are roller bearings or ball bearings and there really aren't any in this machine other than probably the motor maybe the motor I'm very disappointed in the How to Run a Lathe book here, how little information that is available on oiling the lathe. So it's just this one page here, and it really covers all models. But there you see, oiling the lathe, and uh, you can read through that in your own book. And I showed you how to get a PDF file of this in one of the other videos. But uh, th this really is bordering on the worthless. This is the lubrication chart that I talked about a few moments ago for the 9 inch and the 10K lays model A, B, and C. And this will fold out, I'll show you in just a second. And this is dated 1965. But one of the things that I found interesting here, and I will have a still of this also, is that under uh, operational maintenance, number 5, if you can read it, says do not use an air hose to remove dirt or chips air pressure will force foreign matter into bearings gears etc causing serious damage and uh, in the earlier videos in this series you saw how the chips were jam packed up under the the uh, apron and in the gearbox and so on because of that this is really a wonderful little chart and it uh, folds open. I hope you can get one of these, but if not, you can look at this, but it tells you how to level the lathe and, and how to anchor it and, and uh, other things besides lubricating. Yeah, belt care and maintenance for the back drive and the under drive. But really what we're interested in here is the fold out, and I think that this is uh, something that could be put on the walls of a shop and maybe that's what it was designed for because it's pretty good size. This is the 10K lathe and there's a lot of similarities between this one and the 9 inch. There is quite a few differences between uh, the, the 10 inch and the 10 inch heavy I believe it's called. So we're primarily interested in this. I'm going to zoom in on this in just a minute but there's a couple other little pictures here that I'm going to show you stills of particularly about draining and flushing the the apron and uh, some some other oiling points but these are oiling points for accessories look what it says here your lathe will do its part 
if you do yours keep it clean and oiled. Now much of the information on this chart is for shops where they're using the lathe eight hours, you know, full shifts. In uh, our basement shops, our home shops, our garage shops, we aren't using the lathes that often and sometimes you're just using it for one hour a month or whatever so you may not need to oil it every time and you can over oil it uh, it won't hurt it but it'll make a mess but th this this uh, chart is designed for I believe constant use but the first thing I want to talk about is the different kinds of oils and it is extremely confusing because South Bend talks about oil weights in terms of Sabolt. Now Sabolt, you can look it up, it's hard to understand, but it's a, visco a universal viscosity, that is thickness uh, system for oils and other materials. They even talk about the Sabolt of peanut butter and uh, s pancake syrup, etc. But we're interested in the oils and I'm going to loosely translate those Sabolt numbers into the uh, SAE motor oil numbers, but do not use motor oil. I will give you a still on this. Now these are all lubricating oils and it says here machine oil sable universal viscosity rating in seconds at 100 degrees Fahrenheit blah 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 so read through that if you can understand it and all those oils were available from South Bend and uh, there's some uh, some numbers but you certainly can't order those now but really there are four different oils that we are concerned with a type A a type B a type C and then uh, another one that's not on here is the whey oil, and I'll talk a little bit more about that. And then on this chart, it tells you which oil to use. Now, I would say that any oil is better than no oil, but certainly with this lathe that's in question, no telling who oiled it over the years or what kind of oils they used, and you can be sure that they weren't always the correct oils. And I could almost guarantee that because even in my uh, life, I just used mainly 20 weight non detergent oil in the lubrication of my lays, and it didn't seem to hurt. But I want to tell you the correct way. So let's take a look now at the different oils that I have and that you might want to use or slight variations thereof. And again, we're talking about A, B, and C oils and the whey oil. Now back to the garage so I can show you the containers that I have out there. Since this video is running much longer than what I expected, I'm going to talk about all the different oils and then in the companion video, which will be the next one, I'm going to actually lubricate the lathe using these oils. But in review now, Oil uh, A is spindle oil, and that's Sabolt 100 that it calls for, but that's about the same weight as 10 weight oil. Loosely translated, same viscosity. B for gear oil, they call for Sabolt 150 all the way through 240. That's about 20 weight, but in fact, I'm going to use some gear lube too. And finally, C. Anything that's marked C should be uh, there. Are all the other lubrication points that's Sable 250 to 500, that's about 30 weight. And then finally, I'm going to talk a little bit about whey oil. Okay, let's get started now. Here's the way I have my oil cans arranged, and then I'm going to show you what's in them here in just a second. But I have uh, different kinds of oil cans, and by the way, these. Eagle number 66's are the best oil can you can find. I think they stopped making them, or you can find them used. Uh, I, I also use different kinds of oil cans. This is a good uh, one as well with 20 weight in it. And, uh, you know, regular traditional cans. But I have here the four kinds of oils that are called for by the South Bend Lathe Company. In this one, I have spindle oil, and we call that A. Here we have uh, 20 weight oil, which is, we talked about Sable, but that's 20 weight, and I got that marked B, and this is 30 weight, 
which I got marked C and I have just filled this one moments ago and finally I've got whey oil and I'm going to show you several different kinds of whey oil and possibly where to find it. These oils you can find probably at Napa and I'm going to show you some of those. So now let me get down to the different kinds of oils that we have or I have back here and I'll start out with spindle oil. But first let me tell you what not to use. Do not use cutting oils of any kind as lubricating oils. And some of the darker ones also have sulfur in them and they're, they're just not to be used. Do not use regular motor oil, but I'm sure it gets used all the time, but there's detergents and all kinds of other additives here. And, and here's a more cutting oil. You know, I have so many different kinds and some of mine is just in syrup bottles and I bought a whole bunch of it at an auction that way. Alright now back to spindle oil. Remember the South Bend lathe, at least most of them have what we call plane bearings or friction bearings and they're bronze type bearing and they must be adjusted so that there's room for an oil film and if you do not have the right uh, oils the film may not be maintained if you know and look up oil film if you don't understand that but in this can I have been using either number 10 weight non-detergent uh, lubricating oil or Sometimes I use this spindle oil. Now that's, notice that that is number 10 weight. And that came from this company and actually is meant for Bridgeport Mills. I've talked about this company. They're very reliable and good. But there's uh, spindle oil. Notice how thin that appears to be. And I'm going to pour some of that out here in a little while and show you. But that oil A is to be used only in the two oilers on the headstock that oil the main bearings. Okay? We got that straight. Is that clear as mud? Okay, here's a 20 weight and that's B and that oil is to be used, again if you remember this, for uh, gear lube. Now to me that seems thin for gear lube and we're talking about the uh, the gearbox and all of the gears on the end and that's what I'm going to use here in a little while or in the next video but I also have used this not in the gearbox but in the uh, gear train on the end of the headstock because this just sticks so well to the gears. However, this is not what South Bend recommended. So use that at your own risk. This is what they call for. But again, it seems relatively thin for me. And I had bought that originally when I was doing my Atlas videos. And that was back in uh, December of 2012. And I'm going to, sh again, go to the Napa store and show you some of this here in just a minute. So that is for the gears only. B. And here is oil C. Remember that that's for all other lubrication points. That's about the uh, approximate Sabolt viscosity. And again, it's about 30 weight. And you'll see this as I have bought this, like I say, seven minutes ago at the Napa store. And notice that it says lubricating oil, non-detergent. It does not say motor oil. And I'll, I'm going to show you something in that, uh, that short field trip, you know, to try to explain some of this. And I could not get an explanation from the man at Napa, although he was wonderful. A wonderful man, but that is to be used, like I said, all the other lubricating points. So now you've seen A, B, and C. Let's take a look at the whey oils. Here are the whey oils, and they are to be used on the bed, that is the ways of the lathe bed. Also, it's recommended for the cross slide dovetails and the compound rest dovetails, although that probably, it probably seldom gets used there. You will not find whey oils at your local box store. They'll laugh at you if you can get anybody to even wait on you. But this whey oil, and I, I'm not using this on lathes, but it's probably just fine. Again, that's from HW uh, Machine Repair, and that is meant for the bridge ports, and that's what I use in the oiler, uh, the Bezier oiler on my bridge port. But notice that it, it appears to be quite thin. Okay. I like to use this whey oil. That's South Bend oil, and I bought that in the Grizzly store at uh, Springfield, Missouri a couple years ago. Oh, 
I date a lot of things. I don't know. It's kind of an obsession that I have. My dad used to do that. I couldn't find it in the Grizzly catalog, but that is meant for South Bend Lays. Okay, and then thirdly, this can of whey lubricant came with that clausing lathe that I have in the, in the basement. You've seen that. And when that lathe was bought at the high school 35 or 40 years ago, this came with it and a can very similar to this with uh, paint, touch-up paint for the clausing lathe. So I still got plenty of that. You don't use all that much of it. And there's some directions on there. But this is the one that I have in the... Uh, in this can. Now let me take just a minute here to show you what this oil looks like because some of it is kind of sticky and some is not. So let's, let's look at these uh, lay, uh, whey oils. I'm going to dump a little bit out and feel it with my fingers. I hope the detail is not disgusting you. Sometimes my brother and I get overexcited and zealous about something that really doesn't matter and this may be one of those times but again this is the whey oil in that can. I'll set that aside and I'm going to dump just a little bit of each of these different brands of oil on these metal plates so you can see what it looks like. It's almost clear. This is the South Bend. Look at that, that's green. I dumped too much of it, and that's so much thicker, isn't it? And this is the clausing. And that is almost brown like motor oil. Now, if we can look at these, first of all, the... All right. Now here's the, the South Bend. It seems quite a bit thicker. The South Bend, quite a bit thicker. Notice that it seems somewhat sticky. Stringy, almost. And then finally, and this is an old can of oil, I don't think oil ages, but you know, this has got to be 35 years old. And look at how thick that is. And may I say that on the closing lay, there are oilers that oil the apron. My brother is so obsessed by that that he adapted some other lathes uh, with oil holes so that you'd get the oil directly on the bed because if you put it on the, the end of the bed sometimes the wipers take it off and it seems to be self-defeating. So there's three different kinds of approved whey oils that are really quite a bit different but again that's the South Bend and uh, let me just see okay yeah that is the green oil that I have in here. I think I'll mark it South Bend. All right I know I overdid that, but I'm going to do something similar here with the other three uh, weights of oil, A, B, and C, and I hope this, you can speed through this if you don't like it. Right now I'm going to cut to that real short field trip at Napa that I took this morning to explain a little bit what was on the, the store shelves. I think they thought I was nuts down there when I took this video, so cut to that right now and then I'll come back and, and show you the viscosities on these. I'm in the local Napa store now, and they've changed the labels on this Excel motor oil. So it is no longer called lubricating oil, it is called motor oil, non-detergent. But what I'm going to buy here is this lubricating oil, 30 weight. And you notice that it is not motor oil. All of the other oils on this well stock shelf are motor oil. And I'm trying to get lubricating oil, so I'm going to buy this right now. All right, here we go with A, B, C, and you know there are little devices to check viscosity, but here's uh, A, the spindle oil, and this is going to be 
like very thin almost like cooking oil that's number 10 now the 20 weight and you know you know all of this from handling motor oils but so many of the motor oils now are you know all weather oils you can see that's a little bit thicker and here and we're using very thin um, motor oils in some of the modern four-cylinder engines at zero whatever it is here's the 30 weight that I just bought fresh from the refinery and you can see that that is thicker and looking at the 10 weight here and I don't think you're going to be able to tell much by what I'm doing here the 20 weight and finally the 30 weight which seems to you can almost pool that together a little bit compared to this which is going to run and the 10 weight you really can't even hardly gather it. If I could find my viscosimeter that was left from when I used to do a lot of spray painting, I would give a demonstration with that. I'm sure you guys that work for BP Oil or Phillips Petroleum or something like that are having a good laugh here at how unscientific I am or was. But uh, in conclusion now we got oils A, B, and C as well as the whey oil and some other gear oils that I had over there. And uh, now I'm going to put these to use in the next video showing you how to lubricate your South Bend 9-inch lathe. I hope you enjoyed this and it wasn't uh, too boring for you. So, Tubal Cain saying so long and I'll see you soon.